including the NIS Director General, uh, Nurjin Haji, who obviously, being uh, in the intelligence uh, wing, worked very closely also um, with the Chief of Defense Forces. Um, Colonel Shaba, you were telling us that is a quarter guard, what we are seeing on the screen? I think so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, what what it, is it supposed to do? It's a quarter guard. Mm -hmm. It's a, a guard for the generals. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a guard for the president, president. Mm -hmm. and there's a guard for the generals. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just a, a quarter guard for the generals. Mm -hmm. That is uh, the one which is going to do the post, which you asked earlier. The last post. post. The last post. Mm -hmm. That is actually the one who are going to do it. Mm -hmm. That is his guard which is going to say bye okay. to, the, to the general. Mm -hmm. uh, that is why they are here. They are. Uh, services you can see from the Air Force, from the Na from the Army, and from the Navy, mm. uh, doing the the the, the quarter guard okay. for the general. The, actually, it's almost. I think uh, it's almost arriving mm. uh, to receive the body. Okay. Uh, so they're standing here, strategic. It is because the body is almost arriving. Yes, yes. almost alive. That's okay. all. The timings. Mm. Uh, that is uh, what is it? The timings of the arrival mm. and the timings of standing <laughs> and the timings that they are. Uh, they the everything is. Uh, they can't stand there. You can't put them for too long. Yeah. <laughs> They will start falling. So <laughs> <laughs> you, have to, you have to coordinate all these things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It must be coordinated. It must be coordinated. Yeah, you know, once they're standing there for hours, and then mm. yeah. it, becomes, it becomes floppy. <clears throat> and a quarter guard is just the size. Mm -hmm. I think a full guard is 30. 30. Yes. 30. A full, full guard is the president. Mm. Is the president. Mm. What number is it? Uh, <clears throat> usually. Uh, it's 99927. Nine, yes. 27 people? Yes. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. The quarter it? guard is 21. 21. Yeah. 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 So, I believe quarter guard is, yes, it's the number. Okay. It's the number. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Having been a pilot, Colonel Oshava, uh, tell us um, about this m mi missing man formation uh, that we saw yesterday. We only saw yesterday. Yes. Uh, the missing man formation comes from, uh, started actually from Vietnam mm -hmm. War. Uh, it was to honor pilots who didn't come home, like I said. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah? So, you have a standard formation, you have four aeroplanes. Yeah. Then you remove one in, the one in the middle. You know, you have four aeroplanes, mm. they go like this, like the finger here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number one, number two, number three, and number four. Mm -hmm. yeah? So you remove this person, but you don't fill that space. So that it comes down like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah? instead of being like that. So that's the missing man formation. It denotes that one of us is missing. Mm. We have lost one of us. Mm. Yeah. That's all it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, quite an interesting one. That is what you saw yesterday. Mm. Because one would have actually thought probably is the, is the mistake. No, no, no. That is, it is designed <laughs> the like that. <laughs> but it was significant in itself. Yes. The yes. missing man formation yeah. that we saw yesterday. Yes. Um, but it is not likely to be shown here because the military... Uh, those traditions were observed yesterday. Is those it likely to be repeated? I I doubt it will be. No. Okay. No, it will not be there. All right. So it won't be uh, repeated uh, on this side. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, the, the cracks of a military honor is supposed to be given to a general, really, uh, were given yesterday. Um, so today, much of it is in Tamen. But even though it is in Tamen, nothing departs from the discipline. It is going to be a military event all the way until the general um, is. Buried, and so mourners continue to flock. And I think a lot of members of the public have already made uh, their way here. I think the seats that are unoccupied are actually VIP seats. Uh, members of the public sat uh, down a long time ago. And look at that. Yeah. Even laying a carpet needs matching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well. That's the military for you. And I was re as I was remarking, probably there's a lot of uh, uh, discipline the society can borrow or ape uh, from uh, the military as a means of living and probably to avoid conflict um, at the end of the day. So once the body has arrived and you've seen the formation of our quarter guard, uh, here we go. Uh, it is not easy to tell where we are at this point or where the body has reached. Uh, but that procession it cannot be very far. It can be very far from uh, Senator Obama uh, Primary School, where the event will be. And this is the last lap for the general as he comes back home for the last time. Uh, general Francis Omondi Ogola, who died on Thursday.
uh, in a helicopter crash uh, in uh, West Pokot. He was there uh, on a tour of duty to see his men and, of course, inspect works being done uh, by his men. By the way, the military is engaged in the reconstruction of schools that were uh, destroyed uh, by banditry. And um, the president revealed it's a conversation they had had about the reconstruction of those schools. And therefore, the general was, you know, um, uh, going there uh, to inspect how the works are going. And as you heard from the president, he did not ask for money for the reconstruction of the schools. He went to his budget and found money that mm -hmm. would reconstruct um, the schools. Uh, that's not a typical public servant. You know what typical public servants do. Well, that's, that's, what, that's what makes the difference between them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? 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 What the military is doing in those bandit prone areas is not purely, mainly, not purely for security. Mm. They're also looking at community services. Yeah? Mm. Uh, we need to settle those people, yeah, so that they stop wandering around all over the place. Mm. And we need to give them facilities that will help them settle. Schools, hospitals, water, those kind of things, mm. so that they, are, they, they become settler communities, which will then be easy to provide security once they have settled, mm. instead of this roaming around. Mm. So mm. the military is heavily engaged in that. Part of the program. Mm. A typical public servant, uh, Colonel Rioba, would tell the president probably need 700 million to reconstruct these classes. But General sees the urgency, doesn't ask for money, goes to his budget uh, that is allocated to the Kenya Defense Forces and gets money to reconstruct um, uh, classes. It speaks of high discipline and integrity in leadership. Yeah, it's mm. true. It's, uh, <clears throat> what uh, Asava said is that uh, when you get out there, there are things that you see because you are on the ground. Mm. And uh, General Gora was literally on the ground mm. uh, in, in seeing what, what is happening in the, in, the, in the areas. He knows that uh, what he's saying is that if you settle these people down, you give them a school, give them water, you give them um, uh, health facilities, they will settle down. Mm. If they settle down, it's easier to administer them. Rather than uh, people who are roaming from one point to another, you go tomorrow, you don't find them here. They are moved to a different place looking either for water or for, for other, for other uh, services. So if you build and you build, like now the families, bring the children to school, it's not easy to pull out the children again to another place. Mm. You are building them a school, now they are permanently there. That is mm. how, what uh, uh, you, uh, you, you could see the general doing. And uh, not only there, but all over where the troops are deployed uh, mm. to do their work. Mm. The Deputy President and uh, the Honorable Duale, um, as you would imagine, are the ones who are the Kenya, uh, Kisumu International Airport to receive the body of um, uh, the late general, and they have arrived. That means then the body is not really far off uh, from the area. Probably in the next five minutes, we'll have a body uh, at Senator Obama uh, Primary School. Uh, that's the uh, State House MC. Uh, let's listen to what he has to say. Someone wind up with a vote of thanks after a prayer for the family before we exit. A quick reminder only those who have been briefed to go to the graveside, will proceed to the graveside. There is very, very restricted space. It's also the wish of the family and would like to honor and respect that wish. So if you have not received a brief to go to the graveside, we kindly request as we exit, you remain in the tent where you will watch the proceedings from the screens provided. So please, let's honor the family's request that only those briefed will proceed to the graveside. If you have not received a brief, kindly, we request that you remain here in the tent so that you'll watch the proceedings. We're about to begin, so we'll be starting shortly. Studio.
probably this time studio means myself. Um, and we continue with the live coverage of uh, the event. Um, as you've heard from uh, Gitonga, those who will be at the grave site are the only ones who have received a brief um, uh, from the family and the Kenya Defence Forces uh, because not everybody will make it to the grave site. But not to worry. Uh, KBC has exclusive coverage at the grave site also. Um, so you will get an opportunity um, to also see the interment of the uh, late General uh, Francis Omondi um, Ogola. And that's the quarter guard still waiting, but the arrival of the Deputy President and the Minister for Defence, uh, Honorable Adan Duale, uh, means then uh, that we are not too far from the arrival of the body of, of the late um, General. Uh, somehow, Colonel uh, Shava, the death of uh, General Ogola, should it strengthen the resolve of government to deal with banditry? Because either way, why he was in that area is because of the vagaries of banditry. It should. It should. Uh, and we've had this issue for a long time. Mm. It's about time we did something to, to end this senseless mm. uh, banditry. In my opinion, it's no longer the traditional cattle mm. rustling. Mm. It has morphed into something else. Mm. And we need to find out what exactly is happening there. Uh, it is not the tradition where you went and, because I'm getting married, me and my boys will go and take cattle from his boma. Mm. And then when his son is getting married, they come and take cattle from my boma. Mm. The, you know, it was, <coughs> it was a banter <laughs> system. Yeah. But I think now there's a new aspect of this banditry, which I think is econ economic. It looks like an enterprise. It's an enterprise, mm. yeah. So mm. we, it's not longer just... Of course, it's, it's become more violent because of the weapons now available, yeah. machine guns and all that. But there's an issue of money. It's become commercial. Mm. 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 So we need to have a bigger picture of what's going on. Mm. Mm. There are bigger players yeah. other than just the food soldiers mm. who are actually doing the... Karim mm. Oriyoba, uh, your thoughts on this? <coughs> I think uh, those... Those areas, uh, what he has said is that uh, it has changed over time. Mm. Uh, it has changed from the traditional marriage, stealing for, mm. for marriage, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Now it has changed to commercial. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I suppose that there, it, it, there must be a solution for that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we have uh, now expanded uh, information. Mm. Yes. And uh, why is this information being used to curb those things? Yes. It, a study must be done mm. uh, to curb those things. Yeah. And it is possible now with the technology, uh, information technology yeah. and uh, communication. Uh, it shouldn't it, 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 it has changed. Of course, the, the people who changed are also the people who might change to the another, mm. another level. Mm. But... Uh, a uh, time like this one now uh, should be completely it, it, to be maybe like banditry in Nairobi and uh, stealing and what, but not uh, having mass weapons like that, the, the, the place there now is that uh, it, it, it must be a study and uh, do something about it. Mm. And it must come from uh, all walks of life, from the, the uh, security forces mm. to everybody, mm. so that we know what is this, why is this so lambert, and why is it happening areas like this one. Mm. It must. People have uh, have knowledge. Maybe the the locals have information, yeah. and it must be. Uh, be given so that yeah. these things can be, this man is can be done away with. Mm. We need now development. We don't need to buy weapons to go and fight a uh, human being. We need uh, money for buying uh, these armored cars for development, mm. for roads and for other things, mm. not for uh, basic security. <laughs>
fighting banditry. Mm. Yeah, it, actually, it's not uh, a nice thing at all uh, right. this time. Um, love images from uh, CIA. We continue to await the arrival of the body of uh, General Ogola. Uh, but so far, we can report uh, that the top hierarchy of the country is in uh, uh, Senator Obama at Senator Obama Primary School uh, because, and I think the body is arriving now. Uh, yeah. Uh, it is just around the area. Uh, but we can report that President William Ruto is in uh, at Senator Obama Primary School. The Deputy President, Brigadi Gashagwa, is also there. Um, uh, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, um, Saleh Mudavadi, has seen Defense Minister, Honorable Arden Duale. Um, Moses Kuria, the Cabinet Secretary for Public Service. Florence Bore uh, for Labor. Uh, and social protection. We also have Zachary Njeru, the Minister for Water and Irrigation, and other government officials really who are also here. Um, remember, uh, being a ranking government official, um, almost nearly uh, the entire of government is in CIA uh, to bid goodbye uh, to the general. So what is happening there? Uh, a, little, a little bit of consultations on the uh, program. Um, but like the canals in studio have already told us, it's a meticulous uh, and well-planned event. There's no room for mistakes. There's no room for chance. This is how it must be. And as you noticed from yesterday, even the speeches were very limited and very orderly. Uh, and I think it is only the intervention of a president again that even the uh, former opposition leader, uh, Raila Odinga, was allowed to speak, of course, to as a ranking um, uh, 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 official uh, in the Republic of Kenya, of course, to also mourn um, the general. But looking at how the program was planned, clearly it took the intervention of a president for uh, some of his speeches uh, to be made. And I think that too will reflect today. Not a lot of people will speak um, at this event uh, because I see even the last post has allocated time that it must be done within uh, this time. Can we listen in a bit and uh, see what is ongoing um, in Syria before we come here? Uh, of course, as we await the arrival of uh, the body of village general. Okay, I understand she's speaking Tholu, um, so uh, we can listen in. Uh, but the religious leaders, and it looks like the Anglican church is, uh, uh, will be officiating the mass, uh, uh, based on what I see from uh, behind the speaker. Uh, those are clergy from the Anglican church, uh, and particularly the Bondo Diocese. Uh, General Ogola, as we were told earlier, is involved or was involved in the construction of a church in his village. That is Nduru uh, village, the Nduru ACK. Um, and it has been consecrated today by uh, the primate of the Anglican Church in Kenya or the province of Kenya, uh, uh, the Right Reverend Jackson Ole Sapit. Once the body has arrived, we shall see that procession. Um, yeah, it's very close uh, to uh, being at the Senator Obama uh, Primary School. It is 10.47. Uh, that means that they're still uh, in time. And... Uh, uh, being a military event, it will be conducted in accordance with, um, or rather in strict adherence to time. And uh, that's when now when the body uh, arrives is when we'll see the exit of a president from the briefing tent where he is together with um, uh, the uh, deputy president and other senior officials. Actually, the speakers has lined up in the uh, program after the eulogy, the tributes will only come from the family, uh, friends representative, the church representative, a military representative, and then uh, government. All of them led by the chaplain NC. Oh, and the salmon comes after uh, the uh, uh, tributes. 
Uh, at exactly two is when uh, the program says the commander in chief is supposed to leave at own pleasure, and that is to leave the grave site. That is after uh, he's uh, laid the wreath and the national anthem is played. Remember, I think today marks the end of a three day uh, mourning period, and as announced by the president, um, and the hoisting of uh, the flags at half mast to Moon General Ogola and the eight others who perished uh, in that uh, aircraft accident. There's a lot of money that goes into training a soldier, so losing one is clearly a big dent on Kenya security formation, Colonel Ryoba. It, it must be a lot of money that goes into training an officer. It is, it is mm. and especially what maybe a server can, because he has gone mm. through what the training is, mm. It's a massive money. Mm. It's a really uh, uh, a lot of uh, resources to train one soldier or one officer, like mm. now, pilot mm. from from cadet up to where mm. he was. Mm. It's a lot of money. Mm. It's a, it's a, it's a, a huge lot investment. of resources. Yeah. Maybe it's a the, huge investment. Mm. Mm. It's a huge, huge. It's a huge investment. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> pilot training alone will cost. The pilot training will cost about 10, over 10 million shillings. Almost 10 million shillings. Yeah, because they count everything. Yeah. Uh, I attended a course that uh, uh, the cost at that time, that was uh, in 87. Mm. The, cost of that, the cost of that course was at $1 million. Then? Mm. One million dollars. Yeah. So clearly, at this point, then it must be very high. It's high now. Mm -hmm. So, like that course, they are counting. It's a weapons course. They counted every bullet I fired, every bomb I dropped. Mm. <laughs> it was costed. Yeah. Besides, just the <coughs> the cost of of flying the airplane, operating the airplane. Those are add-ons. Mm. So, yeah, you're talking a few million, several mm. million mm. shillings. Several millions of shillings. Yeah. For one officer. Yeah. Wow. Flying officers. Mm. Of a flying officer. Yes. And it's yeah. quite sad um, um, that it had to happen. Um, losing a General Ogola and the other men um, and women. There was one lady, that is a Sergeant Nyawera, uh, who also died in the uh, copter. Uh, crash and of course we continue to mourn with their families and to encourage them at this uh, point um, and they'll be uh, buried in diverse dates uh, within the course of uh, next week and of course as announced by the president the government continues to assist their families in planning uh, the burial and interment of um, uh, the soldiers uh, but one of them uh, the brigadier general from uh, Kilifi uh, was buried on uh, Friday. Yes, on Friday. Um, and that means then, after the laying of General Ogola, uh, there are, and there's another um, seven, uh, and the military will still be involved in the whole of the process. Um, that's Nurdin Haji again, uh, making his way to the uh, tent. I think he was, he's coming from the briefing tent where the president is. Um, and that's the inside of uh, the tent where the mass will be held. And members of the public and other dignitaries are already seated. So those empty seats you see there are um, the VIPs who are yet to make it uh, to the tent because they are at the briefing point. And uh, who is that? Maybe foreign. Very interesting figures today. You will see um, a lot of people uh, making their way to um, a CIA in honor. Like uh, Colonel Shava and Colonel Ryoba were telling us, uh, there's a lot of exchanges that go in between, you know, a general probably in Kenya and a general in another country. And that means then, that is Ezekiel Mashogu, the Minister for Education, who I've seen there. Um, and that means then there's a, there are a lot of, you know, senior military officials who will be coming from other countries to come and honor uh, a General Ogola. I also see the Solicitor General 
um, with uh, accompanying uh, um, Minister Mashogu. It's just like we said, nearly the, probably the entirety of government is uh, in CI because it is the, um, the center of all at this point as the country bids uh, goodbye uh, to General Francis Omondi Ogola, who was the chief of defense forces. And the quarter guard is now warming up. I don't know whether that, those are the military terms you use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, uh, warming, warming up. up. Yeah. You get the blood flowing. Yeah. <laughs> you just stand there for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it is important because if you're standing there, uh, warming up uh, ahead of the arrival um, of uh, the body. Yeah. Yesterday we saw them, but I, they, they were not in this ceremonial uh, uniform. I think they were, they were wearing they were wearing military fatigue yesterday. Yes, they were wearing but today the combat. Yeah, they were wearing combat. Mm -hmm. The reason why they were wearing that, and even yeah. listen to uh, General Kahiri's speech, mm -hmm. he, he said he explained that he said today we are all wearing our combat uniform because yeah. the general died in a combat area, and he was actually in his combat uniform. Uh -huh. So it was in honor of that. Okay. Yeah. Quite interesting. Yeah, so those who didn't, who didn't hear that, now you understand why <laughs> uh, they were in combat uniform. It's because the general died in a combat area and died in his combat uniform. So as a means of honoring him, that's why all of them were in yeah. combat. Yeah. So that means then if, when we see General Kahariri today, he will be in his official yes. today uh, he white be in uniform ceremony. for the Navy. He, ceremonial. Okay, the ceremonial. Here um, you must wear ceremonial. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm. So today you were wearing ceremonial. Yesterday was fatigue. Yeah. Mm. So why ceremonial today? Because it's, it's, a, it's a ceremony. Okay. Uh, and it's for a high ranking officer. Mm. Yeah. You must be. Uh, yeah. You might expect the next one, which is on 26th, mm -hmm. would be in Sveria. Yeah. Mm. Now it will not be in. Uh, yeah. It's a memorial service, mm. would be in Sveria. It will be in Sveria. Okay. Yeah. That one was. <laughs> oh, the, one, the memorial service on the 26th? Yeah, yeah they will be in Sveria. We will see all of them now in Sveria. Yeah. Finished with the military now, it's his uh, service. Oh. Yeah, you, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of rigors involved in uh, <laughs> running the military. It's just a standardization. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> it gets a little bit mucky. Mm. Yeah. So <laughs> 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 All right. Um, uh, of course, we continue to await the arrival of a body. That's Kalonza Musioka, the Wiper Party leader. Uh, uh, and of course, the, uh, having an entourage of uh, several MPs from the Waipa Party, um, he's also here. Remember, the opposition has uh, has uh, is pushing for um, an all-round investigations to establish the cause of the accident um, that killed uh, General Ogola and the other eight. And it's also something that uh, the Honorable Ray Lodinga. Uh, pressured yesterday uh, when he spoke and mentioned that it is important that an investigation uh, is concluded to establish what exactly transpired. Is that Peter Munya? Yes. Is it? No, it is not. not. It's not, not Peter Munya. I thought he was behind Kalonzo Musioka, but yeah. it is not him. That's Kalonzo Musioka. Um, I've that's, also seen several MPs from Waipa who are accompanying him uh, as um, we await for the arrival of uh, the body at Senator Obama yes. uh, Primary School mm -hmm. in Alego Usonga. Yeah. The carpets are being lined up uh, and straightened. Even the eulogy distribution yeah. is being done by the military. <laughs> yes. There's no civilian no. business here. <laughs> no, There's is. no civilian business here. <laughs> it is the military that is in charge. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, like we say, this, so this is a military, a civilian, it's a military function. Yeah. Memorial service, yeah. but this one... <laughs> no, no, even the memorial was still being... <laughs> it, it will still have a sense of, it's you know, yes. some military, some military yeah. Yeah. Because it's still, it's still our function. Mm. 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 function mm. so. And it is important probably to, you know, um, uh, check some of these things because it is the first time um, the country has lost a serving CDF. Yes. yes. Um, that means we've never had a burial ceremony for a sitting CDF, mm -hmm. and this is how um, it largely uh, looks. Um, Kalonzo Musioka is conferring with uh, uh, the former Muranga governor, Mwangi Wairia. Uh, he's also run into trouble with the law. I think next week he's supposed to present himself before a judge 
but of, of course that is not why he's there. He's there to mourn um, General Ogola. And it is important at a point like this, for a senior uh, government official, yeah, the country has dropped its political differences to coalesce together to mourn a man. Those are not uh, things we, we see a lot in Kenya, uh, Karao Shava. Yeah, but uh, the, our military is apolitical. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so th there's no reason to bring politics mm. into this country. It's, it's, it's a national tra strategy. Yeah. Is this Uganda? This is probably like Uganda. Yeah, th those military officials look like they're from uh, yeah. Uganda. And you see, and you see they come in uniform. Also. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah they have also come in <laughs> the ceremony. Yes, yeah, quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, it is. It's, it's uh, political. Mm. Yeah, and uh, the military is supposed to be a unifying organization yeah. for the country. Uh. So there's no need to bring in politics. Mm. This investigation people are asking for. It is standard procedure in the Kenya Air Force. Mm -hmm. Every time you have an aircraft accident, that there is an aircraft accident investigation. There's a board of inquiry mm. that is formed immediately. It is in the, the Air Force standing orders, it's in, the, in the act, so there should be no worries <laughs> about mm. whether there will be an investigation mm. or not. Mm. And the investigation is to determine the cause of the accident, mm. find fault if any, yeah? Uh, was it pass? Was it a human error? Was it a, a technical breakdown in, or you know, mechanical breakdown in the airplane? And all those fast factors will be looked into, mm. and a report will be issued. Mm. They might broaden it a little bit. From what I'm seeing, they might have broadened a little bit in, in bringing the NSIS to give solace to those other people who are, who are talking about other things. Mm. Uh, but the military, the Air Force, will conduct its own investigation mm. and come up with a report. Mm. There you have it. Um, on the split screen, the body is now arriving, uh, making its way to Senator Obama Primary School. And clearly you will see a lot of official uniforms from different countries as is, uh, because I think the person being guided there by one of our officers yeah. uh, is wearing military uniform and it is not... Uh, that will yeah. be a military attaché of some that country. A military attaché from another country. Yeah. Okay. Um, and also making the way there. Uh, the body uh, is arriving now at the Senator Obama uh, Primary School. This is Kipchumba Morkomen, the Cabinet Secretary uh, for Roads. The teacher. And there's Davis Churchill of Energy uh, also in town. It just goes towards... Um, what I was telling you, the entire of government um, coming here to show solidarity with the family and to mourn uh, with the family and kin of uh, uh, General Francis Omondi Ogola. Uh, the body is arriving at the Senator Obama Primary School. That is what the quarter guard was warming up for. And now here comes the general one last time. And all the honors he will be given, uh, uh, Kana Orioba, it will be honors as if he were alive. Even salutations? Uh, it is, it's a complete thing. Mm -hmm. You see now, until uh, the last post, yes. he is still the general. He is still there. Yeah. Uh, and the last post says, now bye-bye. Mm -hmm. uh, all honors and everything will be accorded to him uh, until now. He, he goes down. Mm. The last post saying now Kwaeri, mm. and uh, that is the end of now the journey. Mm. Uh, but uh, all others are given. It, it is stipulated down up to the end, mm. up to the, what you could see uh, the respect for the family. Mm. You see, the, they say respect, even the speaker say respect the family mm. wishes. Mm. The family has to, you have to listen to the family. Mm. Is the family to guide what is to be done? So, it, it, the eye, the, the ear of the family must be completely taken 
uh, into consideration. Mm. That is why you see is now uh, the, the, it is transisting from now that to the family to the grave. Mm. Yes. Mm. The last post, uh, Colonel Shava, is it done to every exiting general, or the last post happens for a general who has died? It's not only for generals. Yes. No. Uh, uh -huh. Last post is given to every soldier. Uh -huh. Yeah. Alive or dead? No, dead. Last post Once is for dead. Once he died, is last post. Yes. Last, last, last post. post is when they bury you. Then last post. Last, last post. Okay. Up to the <laughs> to the grave. even if you are embroiled yesterday <laughs> yes. and you die, <laughs> yeah. they give you because you have come in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it marks the end of your service. Your service. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And it is given to every soldier. Every yes. soldier. Okay. Quite interesting. There, there, there are a lot of things to learn. <laughs> Uh, and uh, the body is arriving at the Senator Obama primary. Uh, uh, the quarter guard uh, standing, uh, awaiting uh, that arrival. And uh, leaders continue to troop in uh, ahead of the uh, service. It is quite instructive that the commander in chief arrived very early even before those who serve under him yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, arrived. Yes. I think it also points it. towards the view of being a stickler to time also. Uh, and again, being the commander in chief, it was important that he, he yeah. be early yeah. um, as his troops uh, execute this event. Um, I think he's been in that tent now for almost 40 minutes. Yeah, he has to come early yeah. because he needs a brief. Mm. Mm. The brief is done to him. Mm. He cannot come with others now to come late. Yeah. Mm. It, it, it is a brief. It's a brief, a complete brief. Mm -hmm. uh, how the events. Things, the events will be, mm. what will happen. He is the one now as a, as a scene, see, to receive uh, mm. his soldier. Mm. Uh, you, see, you, you see now the deputy uh, president received in Kisumu. Yes. Now he has to come. Like, like what you said, you, you see, remember the formation? There was somebody in the front yes. and there was somebody at, Behind. at the rear. Yes. So there must be, all the time, there must be that formation. Mm. That mm. formation. The mm. president is at the front now. Yeah. The vice the president is coming from Ria, yes. uh, make sure that things are proper from Ria. Mm. And the president must be there earlier to receive. Mm. So he's in the front of everybody to get a brief and to receive the body. That All is right. The majority whip, Silvana Sosoro, uh, also the MP for GAM, uh, as uh, the Honorable Elisha Odiambo, I've seen him there. And there's uh, the two cabinet secretaries, Moses Kuria and Kipchumba Murkoman, um, conversing. But to just take you uh, through a bit of a program, and what the program says is that uh, uh, the body, of course, left Mashuja funeral home uh, to Embakasi and then arrived in reception of a body at the Kisumu airport, which already has happened. And then uh, guests were required to be seated at Obama uh, Kogelo Primary School uh, near village in Siaya County. Um, then the arrival of the body, which is happening right now, uh, at the Obama Kogelo Primary School, um, and then uh, the arrival of the CNC, which should be inside the tent, and then the mass recession uh, begins. There will be opening prayers, or coming remarks, eulogy, um, tributes being made, uh, Bible readings and sermon. There will be a family uh, prayers. Uh, there will be dedicated. Uh, the family of General Gola will be dedicated to uh, God, and then after that. Um, after the vote of thanks and announcement, um, the military burial rights and internment will kick in. Uh, there goes the Prime Cabinet Secretary, the Speaker of uh, uh, the National Assembly, uh, that is uh, the Honorable Moses Wetangula, together with the Prime Cabinet Secretary, uh, Musalia. Mudavadi. Now they're headed to, from the briefing tent, they're headed to the tent where their service um, is going to be. That means then the person that has remained, uh, the people that have remained in the tent are uh, probably the uh, commander in chief, the deputy president, and uh, uh, senior officials in the military. That includes 
the Vice Chief of Defence Forces, um, Lieutenant General Kahariri, as well as the service uh, commanders. And all of them will take their sitting positions. And indeed, we are right that uh, the Ugandan army is also represented. I think I saw someone in the Ugandan military fatigue seated mm -hmm. somewhere mm -hmm. behind there. Uh, could be an aide of the officials we saw wearing official um, uniform uh, from Uganda. And uh, other than the fact that we are neighbors, we are also brotherly uh, nations. And you will see uh, a lot more uh, coming. But quite interesting, there's, there's a departure in terms of military traditions between us and uh, um, Uganda, for example, because I, I, I realize they can even have four generals, four four star generals at a time, when in the Republic of Kenya there's only one four star general at a time, uh, uh, Kala Shava. Well, our, 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 our appointments are governed by the Defense Council. Mm. Yeah? And ranks are. F <coughs> are Allocated to those appointments. So that's why we only have one four star general. Mm. Yeah? Whilst in Uganda, you have a lot of generals who don't even have. Uh, even postings, yes. Postings. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that's a slightly different system. Mm. And their, their government is also heavy with military. For instance, they have uh, members of parliament, MPs. Military officers were MPs. Mm. The, the, the military is a constituency, mm. so they're represented in parliament, mm. which is uh, unlike us. We don't have that. So mm. the, the Uganda Army under Museveni says they have a stake in the government because they they liberated the Ugandans from yeah uh, yeah. So they have a stake in government. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So well, the military has a different standing. Yeah, clearly a different. Yeah, go ahead. yeah it's true mm. that uh, a point, a, a rank is uh, linked to uh, appointment. Mm. It's not hanging you can't anywhere. Be hanging. You cannot be promoted to stay and wait for a factor. Yeah. <laughs> you must be. You must be. You must be pegged to a certain appointment. Mm. So you are promoted to a certain. Appointment mm. and duties. Mm. Yes. Those you are given to is because that uh, appointment has duties. Mm. You cannot be hanging outside the the, the military because you have been uh, promoted and you hang in the air. No, mm. it, you are la you are linked to a, to a, to, a, to appointment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quite interesting. Now you know um, why Kenya uh, only has one four-star general. Uh, and the rest are under him. And that's the military band. Yeah. Um, they will be doing a lot of work here today uh, because even the anthems uh, will be played uh, by them. Uh, at the beginning, there will be the national anthem as well as the East African community um, anthem. Let's uh, listen a bit.
soon be beginning so kindly i see people at the back who are still standing please let's take our seats we recognize all mourners present please let's take our seats and just to guide you on the order of the service we'll start off with his excellency the president joining us in this service then we shall receive the body of general ogola and once placed in the rightful position we'll then have the national anthem before we have an opening prayer and a welcome note from the service leaders those who are going to be leading us in the service this morning after that we'll go to the tributes followed by the sermon after which we'll conclude with a thanks before proceeding to the graveside as mentioned earlier only those briefed will be allowed to access the grave site because of the restrictive nature of where it is and the space so if you have not received a brief to be at the grave site we kindly request that we cooperate to view the proceedings from the monitors provided we'll soon be beginning our service and we take this opportunity to thank you for your patience. Studio. Or maybe let's wait for the proceedings outside studio. Let's just remain mute as we now are getting ready to begin the procession. Thank you. As we continue to wait for the beginning of uh, the procession, we want to take this opportunity to specially recognize our friends who've come to help us mourn our fallen CDF. And I take, make special recognition of the Chief of Defense Forces from Tanzania, the Chief of Defense Forces from Malawi, the Chief of Defense Forces from Burundi, the Air Force Commander from Uganda and his delegation who are also representing the Chief of Defense Forces, the Army Chief of Staff from Rwanda representing the Chief of Defense Forces from Rwanda. We also have DAs or members of the Military Diplomatic Corps. We have DAs from the United States, DA from UK, DA from China, the DA from Zambia, the DA from Rwanda, the DA from Malawi, and also the DA from Uganda, all joining us in this occasion. We are beginning the celebrations today. Silence, please. Let us all now rise as we receive His Excellency, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces, Dr. William Samoy Ruto. We may take our seats briefly.
respect, I kindly request that we be upstanding as we now receive the late General Ogola.
the national anthem. The national anthem. Allow me to now welcome Canon Reverend Lele to lead us in an opening prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we want to acknowledge your greatness and that you are mighty in every situation. We pray, Heavenly Father, thanking you that in all circumstances, glory and honor comes back to you. We even want to commit this service before your hands, that dear Lord, from the onset right to the end, just as it was the wish of your servant General Gola, that his life may bring glory to you. May this service therefore be acceptable before you, O Lord, for it is in Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. I kindly request that we take our seats as we now welcome Bishop to give us the welcoming remarks. Welcome, sir. you all in Jesus name praise the Lord may the Lord be with you brothers and sisters in the Lord we are gathered here today and at this moment to lay to rest our departed brother in Christ general Francis Somondiogola, whom the Lord has called to rest with him. We as believers believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And those who believe in him, when they rest, they will also rise and Christ will give them new life. So as we come... We want to welcome you all to this Anglican Diocese of Maseno West where the departed general was one of us in one of our churches, St. Thomas A.C.K. Nduru. Welcome even as you join us to lay to rest this departed brother in Christ, a man whom the Lord used in various ways to touch the lives of very many of us in this church and how I pray that as we go through this service the Lord will be with you find hope find courage find strength in the Lord to the family of our departed brother we do convey our condolences as a diocese to you and assure you of our prayers always and support where need be so the lord bless us as we go through this service in the name of god the father 
Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Back to the MC, even as we proceed in this service. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your Excellency the President, Your Excellency the First Lady, Your Excellency the Deputy President, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Mama Eileen and family, the VCDF, service commanders, our visiting delegates, allow me to observe all protocols. Your Excellency, sir, at this point, we would like to have the reading of the eulogy, and I will call Mrs. Dr. Modoni Rabuku to read for us the eulogy before we proceed to the tributes. So, Mrs. Dr. Modoni Rabuku, kindly, if you may approach and read for us the eulogy. Welcome. Your Excellency, my name is Mrs. Mudoni Rabuku, and it's an honor to be able to read the eulogy for our father, the late General Francis Omondi Ogola. Late General Francis Omondi Ogola was born on 12 February 1962 in Siaya County. He was enlisted into the Kenya Defense Forces as an officer cadet on the 2nd of May 1984 and commissioned as a second lieutenant on 3rd May 1985, upon which he was posted to Moi Air Base, where he later trained as a pilot. During his career in the Kenya Defense Forces, General Ogola held several command, staff, and instructional appointments. In command, he was a commanding officer, like Kipia Air Base, tactical flight wing in 2007, and also base commander, like Kipia Air Base from 2008 to 2012. Upon promotion to Brigadier on 10th April 2012, he was appointed the Deputy Air Force Commander and later on promoted to Major General on the 13th July 2018 and appointed Commander at Kenya Air Force. On 23rd July 2021, he was also promoted to the rank of Lieutenant General and appointed the Vice Chief of, Defense, of the Defense Forces, a position he held till 28th April 2023, when he was promoted to the rank of General and appointed Chief of the Defense Forces. Due to his dedication to service, the late General Francis Omondi Ogola was awarded several medals among them, Moran of the Golden Heart MGH, Elder of the Burning Spear, Head of State Commendation, among others. General Francis Omondi Ogola leaves behind a widow, Mrs. Eileen Kadambi Ogola, and two children, Lona Achieng Omondi and Joel Rabuku Omondi Ogola. He also leaves behind one daughter-in-law, Mudoni Jengamora, and a grandson by the name of Taji Bagara. Thank you. Kali, let's appreciate her with a clap, Tafadali. Thank you, thank you. Next, we'll move to the tributes. And at this point, I would like to invite Professor Fred Were, who will speak on behalf of the friends uh, of the family. Professor Fred Were, to speak on behalf of uh, friends of the family. Welcome. Let me take my breath first, Excellency, uh, President of the Republic of Kenya, Excellency, the First Lady of the Republic of Kenya, allow me to say all, all other protocols observed. So I salute to the fam primary family, uh, Eileen, Joy, Lana, and the little one. <sighs> Michael, both a friend, and part family, but bigger friend even than family. I first met uh, the general about 45 years ago 
when he's a 17 year old young man battling to go to high school what he called high school then uh, I had met him because I was dating his cousin who is sitting next to me there I saw I sort of joined the family from then I could speak for too long but I'll just make one short remark about Francis. Francis was dedicated to everything that he did and measured everything that he did as well. Francis and I regularly sat to have a glass of wine or two. He would take one glass when I take six because he had control of things better than myself. He would not try to stop me but he would very controlled. Francis, to his death, never came late for a social meeting, let alone the serious ones that uh, uh, His Excellency would require him. I can assure you that even the little matters of just going to say hello, he kept his time. So in addition to being the in-law, he was a great friend. I'll just give you one short story of a few words. Some years ago, I was the dean of the School of Medicine, the University of Nairobi, then a gentleman, very well dressed, came and sat outside. I didn't know because I'm inundated with the people, people's issues. So my secretary came and said, there's a very well dressed fellow here. Who says he'll wait his time? I said, does he have a student with him? He said, no, he's alone. I said, okay. Knowing how long it took me with my students primarily, he said, let me come and pull out this well dressed gentleman. It was my brother-in-law, and he had come to plead for some, one thing, that he is in the Air Force. He's not having enough doctors trained into specialists, pediatricians like me, surgeons. What can I do? I told my brother-in-law, we call it Mukhwas in my language, the other side, or Ora in Kijalu, that you bring them. The purpose of this national university is to train, and if I love to train for the armed forces, that's the best thing I would do. Permit me to leave it there, because now there's a list of people who have a thing or two to say. But I, and many others, we have lost a friend indeed, and we accept that uh, that's a destination for all of us. Thank you. Next, I would like to now call upon Mr. Hezekiah Odor, a brother to the late general, to also give a tribute from the family side, Hezekiah Odor. We can give him a warm clap as he's coming, just to encourage him. Karibu sana. To His Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya, all protocols have served, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Canon Ezekai Odur, the firstborn in the family of General Ogola. General Ogola was the fifth born in the family of Mzee Joel Okech Oyeo and Mamadamaris Okello. General was a very loving man to the family. And when we received the sad news of General, when we were preparing for the 100 years celebration of our dad, it was very sad indeed. General was a very staunch Christian who loved prayers and read the Bible severally. He did a lot even to his church. He did a lot even to his community. At the moment, General has left a very big gap in our family because he was taking care of our dad, making sure that he gets medication and checkups regularly. He was also making sure that he sent something to the widows who are in his hands. There were over 30 widows. He also made sure that the students 
who are orphans in the area never missed their education. And he had no lack boundaries in regardless of economic background, social or education background of any person. So we thank God for his life. In the book of Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all other things shall be added unto you. He added, he was considering that part, and God added him all that he required. At the moment, he has also left a very young lady, my sister-in-law, Eileen. At least some concerns can be made to make sure that her life continues because her status in life had gone to a certain level. And now General has left some gap. Otherwise, I thank each one of you to condole with us. Have safe journey masses at the end of the function. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next, I would like to call upon Mrs. Paris Onyango, who is a sister to the general, to also come and speak briefly. And as she is coming also to recognize the presence of some leaders we have, we have Honorable Kalonzo Musioka in the house. We also have Honorable Martha Karua in the house. Thank you for joining us. Why don't we put our hands together for Mrs. Paris Onyango as she comes to also speak. Your Excellency, the President of Kenya, the Deputy President, the Church. Before I speak, I want to follow the instructions that I was given. I was told that I called, uh, okay, he had already invited him. My work was to facilitate his coming here today. He's called Mr. Sewe, who sings his own lawyer, Gidala. Can you come up here? So I want him to sing that song before I talk. His Excellency, Deputy, uh, the church praise the lord allow me to sing this song the studio be ready it is a song that i composed and so i've, co I've translated it into 24 languages in kikuyu it is otatuariga and in kimasai ataimeloni in K kinandi it is amakinigiane sayuni. family kindly be upstanding Sauti.
Oh, 